Welcome back to a special edition of Nightline as we're learning key details about the suspect in the attack on the Ariana Grande concert in Manchester, England. The question tonight, did he act alone? Here's ABC's chief investigative correspondent, Brian Ross. The London tabloid The Sun published the first picture tonight of the man it said was the bomber, 22-year-old Salman Abedi, born in Britain to parents from Libya. Tuesday, in the frantic search to see if others were involved with him, police blew open the door of his Manchester home, looking for evidence including his phone and computer. Among the items, officers removed a book entitled Know Your Chemicals. The critical line of inquiry for us is looking at whether the dead terrorist was acting alone or as part of a group. Authorities also want to know if Abedi used videos posted by ISIS this year with instructions on how to build a lethal suicide bomb. I think the use of a bomb here, as opposed to a car or a knife, demonstrates a much higher degree of sophistication by this individual, really suggesting that he probably did not act alone, that he certainly had some advice on how to create the bomb. There is a huge and active ISIS presence in Libya, and U.S. authorities believe Abedi may have recently traveled there. At one point, Abedi was on the radar of British intelligence as a possible terror threat one of thousands of young men under such suspicion. Abadeh was a, a terrorist suspect in the UK. MI5 were aware of him. They were aware he posed a potential threat, but they didn't think he posed the imminent threat that he obviously proved himself to, to do on, in Manchester. The Manchester neighborhood where Abadeh lived, around an area called Moss Side, just a few miles from the concert arena, is considered by police to be a hotbed of ISIS recruitment. Moss Side is, is very well known. Uh, a lot of people with petty criminal pasts, involvement in gangs, getting involved instead with ISIS later on. Officers did take one man into custody Tuesday, identified by neighbors as the terrorist's older brother. But neighbors said there was nothing they saw in Abedi's devoutly religious family that would suggest any ties to terrorism. No, of course not. No, there's no religion will, will condone and will say uh, killing people is, uh, is right. <laughs> Manchester police have actually been planning for a terrorist attack. This training exercise was held just last year at a Manchester shopping mall to help police prepare their response to a suicide bombing on a crowded soft target. We've seen over the past that ISIS has targeted soft targets, bars, restaurants, uh, sports stadiums, and now uh, a concert. It really is a result of learning about how to create the most carnage possible. It was less than a year ago on a crowded Saturday night at the Pulse nightclub in Orlando, Florida, when an ISIS-inspired gunman easily got past limited security and opened fire. Forty-nine people died in the worst mass shooting in U.S. history. In Paris, ISIS orchestrated the attack on a soccer stadium and the Bataclan Concert Hall, where a popular American rock group was performing. More than 130 people were killed there, a perfect target for the terrorists. These are targets that represent Western civilization, which they see as lascivious, which they see as counter to their very strict version of Islam. Both ISIS and al-Qaeda have been posting new calls for their followers to attack large gatherings any way they can. Just two months ago, there was the attack with a driver mowing down pedestrians on the sidewalk of the Parliament Bridge in London. And last year, the truck attack in Nice, France on Bastille Day. Tonight, oh my God. officials in Great Britain say the Manchester attack with a suicide bomb showed more planning and sophistication and evil. Young teenage girls attending a concert, and they are now uh, the target for an attack like this, really demonstrating how ruthless ISIS is. For Nightline, Brian Ross, ABC News, New York. Our thanks to Brian Ross. We turn now to former national security official Richard Clark and former FBI special agent in charge Richard Frankel. Gentlemen, thanks for coming in tonight. Richard Clark, let me start with you. If this suspect was on a watch list, why was he not actually being watched? Well, because there are tens of thousands of people on watch lists. Uh, and all that can be done when someone is on a watch list is their electronic media use can be monitored, perhaps their phone calls can be monitored, but you can't have eight agents following around 10 or 20,000 people. And it takes 
eight agents or more to follow somebody around 24 hours a day. Richard Frankel, we've been talking for years about the problem of soft targets. It was horrifically displayed overnight in Manchester. What do we do about this problem? Well, without getting into the tactics that NYPD or other police departments use, we're actually pretty good here in the U.S. as far as the soft targets. They do things that make it harder to attack those soft targets. But as we saw in Times Square, it still can't happen. It's really not the soft target that's the problem. It's pre-soft target. So the concert was a soft target, but the area outside that soft target is actually where they where are you, they struck. Are you saying we can never protect the area outside of a soft area? No, you can, but as you protect that, then you go further out and you go further out. And you get to the point where how far out are you going to go before you're, you're, you're too far away. So it's hard. Back to the suspect here, Richard Clark, as you look at the, the facts that are coming in now as we learn more about him, does your intuition tell you that he was part of a larger cell or that he acted alone? I think this is a pretty sophisticated bomb. Uh, I don't think he did it entirely by himself. And what British intelligence and police will be doing now is looking at his cell phone use, his uh, social media, his email use, uh, and seeing who else he was in regular contact with. You'll probably find out that there was a small cell, maybe just the brother, but maybe three or four other people. What do you make of the fact that at least the suspect was born in the UK? He he grew up in that society that he then allegedly attacked. Some of the stuff that we've seen over time uh, from uh, these uh, attackers are that they're, they're not the immigrant population. They're actually that next generation. Go to the Times Square bomber, the subway bomber here in New York, and as we now see in Manchester, he was not an immigrant. He was actually born in Manchester and has now joined the terrorist networks. Richard Clark and Richard Frankel, thank you very much. Really appreciate it.